A blessed Easter to you. We are so glad to see you, though we are still seeing each other through a computer screen. But we wish you the best for your family and are so happy that you can be joining us in this form. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are raised with him to a new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water of this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase our minds, our hearts, the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people, toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The first reading is from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to the people, I truly understand that God knows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in both Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 118 responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. We have been raised with Christ. Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. <clears throat> Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel from the Gospel of John in the 20th chapter. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. 
but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Just for Easter, I brought us back to our usual spot. Made a special effort to be here this morning so we could be together in this beloved place as we celebrate Easter this morning. And here we have our treasure chest, which we've been saving for all of Lent, and we get to open it this morning. Wow, I wish you could have been with me at Stepping Stones Chapel at the beginning of Lent as they discovered with their eyes this treasure chest over in front of the pulpit the first time they were here for chapel after we put the treasure chest here at the beginning of Lent. Wow, they said, what's in that box? But I wouldn't tell them because I wanted to be able to show them the first time we were together after Easter. It may be a little delayed, but let's see what's in the box. I wonder if you remember. Look, hallelujahs are bursting forth. Just like Jesus couldn't be held in the grave, so the hallelujahs that we haven't been singing for all of Lent are bursting forth from our hallelujah box. For we have them, as we've seen, bursting forth already uh, in worship this morning from the first strains of music that we've had this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They've been bursting forth as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And we see them all around our sanctuary bursting forth. The hallelujahs can't be held in the box, even with a lock. Jesus can't be held in the grave because God raised him from the dead, which leads me to what I brought for you today. Look, a basket of Easter eggs. We had to miss our hunt this year, but I brought you some Easter eggs here. You can take one. And here, Pooch Patrol brought you one, which, oh, rats, I'm going to have to open it for you. Well, don't worry about the germs because this puppy dog doesn't have any spit. There, he's got a yellow one. Let me see what's in there. Oh, double rats, it's empty. Oh man, the egg is empty. The sanctuary is empty. The parking lot is empty. All this emptiness, it made the friends of Jesus so confused to go to his grave, the cave, and find it empty. They were confused and afraid. But look, it was so much better that they found not the body of Jesus, even though at first they didn't understand 
because Jesus is alive. And that's what I want to say also to you, that though we love this church building, this is not the church in the deepest sense. We are the church. The people are the church. By the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, we become the church by the Holy Spirit of God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. We are made the church. And so you learn that grace with the fire, that the building is not the church, but how much we love the comfort of gathering together in this place. But even when we are separated, isolated, one in one place, families separated from each other, we are the church, alive, even now. So perhaps when you come back, there will be something in the eggs for you. But for now, hold on to this, that Jesus is alive, and so are we. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now, throughout my sermon, I'm going to say that again. You're going to hear it again. And when I do, I'd like you to respond like that. So let's try that together. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning and a blessed Easter to you. No darkness here, not in the glory of this day, light streaming through the windows, dawn long gone. And we've brought the glory of Easter to the corners and nooks and crannies for you, of each of us, to wherever you're self-quarantining. Bells and lilies, organ and choir. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! A few years ago, an older woman dear to our family succumbed to Alzheimer's. We had known her for many years. At her funeral, her pastor shared something that happened on that day of her passing. Dorothy spent her last months at Artman Lutheran Home. When she died, after the staff had prepared her body to be taken to the funeral home, the nursing staff and all who had been her caregivers lined the hallway on each side as her body was removed from her room to be taken to the funeral home. They call it the walk of honor. To her pastor, that description fit Dorothy so well, a woman who had walked with honor all of her life. I've heard of other rituals of passing like this one, some in military settings. It feels poignant in these days when like weddings, graduations, and lots of other special occasions that fall in this time of social distancing. Funerals are taking place with just a few people at graveside. We can't be together even for these most important events. Ordinarily, when we take the remains or the body to the cemetery to walk with the casket, expressing it in the best way that we can that our love with our love, we walk beside our loved one all the way home. Hold that image in your mind, if you would. Walking all the way home with our loved ones. On Thursday this week, as we remember Jesus' last supper with his friends, I heard something in the gospel that I hadn't noticed before. Introducing the story of Jesus washing their feet the gospel tells us, having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus loved them to the end. He loved them to the end. Suddenly I was struck by our mortal, limit, mortal limits where we can and cannot go. Perhaps you've seen this up close, how moving it is to watch a family member or friend keep vigil through a loved one's illness and dying. It can be long and slow. But sometimes the time is just right, and someone is able to sit at the bedside with a loved one who takes her final breath. Yet however great our love, our journey stops there. There's a line we cannot cross. 
but Jesus. Jesus loved them to the end. And now we see not just to the end, but through the end, carrying them with him through death to a joyful resurrection. I hear the voice of Jesus from earlier in his ministry echoed here. Do not let your hearts be troubled. There are many dwelling places in my father's house. I am going to prepare a place for you. And when I do go and prepare a place for you, I'm coming back to take you along with me so that where I am, you also may be. Jesus loved them to the end. And now we celebrate that our mortal limits are not the end, that Jesus can carry us with him through death to resurrection. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Love is stronger than death. What brings you to worship this day for Easter? Whatever that is, the Lord honors the stirrings of your hearts. Whatever brings you to our virtual doors this morning, we pray that you find a blessing here, God's presence here, and a warm and wonderful grace welcome in all the ways that we are able to offer our welcome right now. Some of us wouldn't know really how to say it out loud, but we come hoping to hope looking for the courage and the faith to hope in the promise of resurrection for Jesus, for loved ones, for ourselves. Oh God, show us how love is stronger than death. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grace has come an amazing digital distance in these last two weeks to be able to offer worship online, Sunday school by Zoom, nightly prayer on a conference call, council committees and teams beginning to gather themselves on online conferencing. We may be small, but we are mighty. I don't know what the technology is. I suspect it's still several steps ahead of us. I'm sure some of you have seen examples of it. For some of you have passed on samples to lift my spirits in the past few weeks. Individuals recording their voice parts from home, as we have been recording the parts of our worship service, put the voice parts all together somehow and become a virtual choir conducted by a choral con director in yet another place. Sometimes you'll see all the computers lined up together in a concert hall, all the parts piped in individually and yet combined together. Other times you just see the individual screens or parts, then hear the amazing blending of voices, making a whole choir that can only be together in virtual space. I find all of that amazing. The example that still uplifts my spirit, that I return to like a prayer, is a Nashville version of the old hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Whatever my lot, let this blessed assurance control. It is well, it is well with my soul. Some of the most important things about our lives we do not choose. Not the anxious stew in which we now live, nor what the parameters of the new normal will look like when we return, nor whether the virus will cycle back before a vaccine is ready nor whether we will be able to endure without getting sick or without a loved one dying. So much is out of our control. We do not choose to stand at the grave or in times like these. These experiences choose us. What we choose is how we will live with where we find ourselves. Standing in the valley of the shadow of death changes how we pray changes even how we cry. But we do not grieve as those without hope. Mary, Jesus calls her. He calls her 
by name. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. The rivers shall not overwhelm you. We are known and loved. Like Mary, we are called back to ourselves to know who we are and whose we are. And death is swallowed up in victory. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I am going to prepare a place for you. And when I do go and prepare a place for you, I'm coming back to take you along with me so that where I am, you also may be. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. On this day we see with Jesus, even our anxiety can be put under the blessing of God. May you know the shimmery light of resurrection breaking through shining through the broken pieces in the wake of death and grief and every other kind of trouble. Hold on to this promise. Love is stronger than death. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen also for you. Amen. saying, Lord, in your mercy, you respond, hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our eyes to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and the leaders of the nations in a time of pandemic, for our president and his public health advisors, for their health and strength, for their wisdom and willingness to serve the public good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For ourselves in a time of worry, grant us peace from our fears and anxieties. Assure us of your steadfast love for us. O oh Lord God, set our feet on the path of justice for Jesus' sake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep 
and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We remember before you, especially those who are ill or dying at this time, and who are isolated in hospitals and care facilities apart from their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With grateful hearts, we thank you, Almighty God, for healthcare workers of all roles, for people who place themselves and loved ones in danger to care for others who fall ill to the virus. For this generosity of spirit, wherever it is found, we praise you, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our worship leaders this day and those who have helped us over the past two weeks suddenly have an online worship presence when we couldn't meet in person. Musicians, production staff, videographers, pastors, readers, and prayers. Bless us to be the church you envision us to be, standing on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. Grant us all that we may need to do this ministry that you have placed in our hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now the prayers of our hearts as we offer them before you, both silently and aloud. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died, especially Joan Miller, who died recently, and the loved ones we memorialize and honor with beautiful Easter lilies, and those who we name before you now in our hearts. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to your, you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. When we lift our offering this morning, we lift our hands dry from washing. We lift the lonely parts of our hearts kept from dear ones, in some cases loved ones ill or dying. We lift our service and work for others, offered sometimes willingly, sometimes because we feel trapped. Things we do well, some things we do because we are the ones around to do them. But all these things are part of our offering to you, O oh God. We lift our hands, we lift our hearts, we lift ourselves. We lift these gifts of our offerings, the money that supports our mission, and all the other ways we give to you, O oh God. We lift these gifts of bread and wine to you who formed us of the dust of the earth, whose breath keeps us alive, to you who calls us by name, how blessed that you know us in this way. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name and the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, 
with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which Jesus gathered for the last time with his disciples to eat with them, he took bread in his hands and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet. Behold the risen Christ. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. The body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Alleluia.